Today topic is a time value of money, right? Time value of money. So to, to understand many calculations in financial management, you should understand very clearly the concept called time value of money, right? So normally in finance, not only not only in finance, in our practical day to day life in finance um, the value of the money is determined determined by the time right so there is a relationship we value the money in terms of uh, it relates to in relation to time right time value of money how time is determined the value of money right that is the uh, this is the chapter Second chapter of this course unit, financial management. Now we, uh, so financial management, tenth edition. It's uh, authored by I M Pandey. This is the second unit of uh, that book. And uh, today's learning objectives are. Today's learning objectives are first understand what is understand what gives money, right? Understand what gives money, its time value, right? We discuss the money, worth of money based on uh, time, and explain the method of calculating present and future values, right? So, uh, present and future. In association with uh, time, present is today, right? Today, future in future years, forthcoming period is so the future. Highlight the use of present value technique, discounting in financial decision. Introduce the concepts of internal rate of return. So these are the uh, learning objectives of this chapter. Right. I ask one question from all of you that you have a certain amount of money. Right? You have a certain amount of money. For example, you have uh, 100,000. You have 100,000 rupees now. Right? And uh, your friend has this money. Um, a friend is asked this money, so I will use Excel. It's very difficult to write. Uh, so we have today, you have. We have uh, rupees one hundred thousand rupees in your hand. Your friend, your friend, your friend asked this money, and he had he told you that uh, he will pay back this money in one year. one year and he will give you the same amount my question is do you willing to give this money to your friend today you have this one hundred thousand 
and he won its money this this uh, money and he promised you that he will repay the money in one year so do you agree on this oh, option 2 uh, this is option 1 option 2 uh, you can put your money in hnb in one year you will get uh, 125 20000 right say honestly uh, you will go for option 1 so option 1 and option 2 right so what do you prefer please uh, tell your answer on chat box will you give money to your friend or to or you deposit money on HNB. Please uh, type your answer in chat box. Option two, yeah, option two, right. Everybody, uh, rational people, choose option two because uh, uh, you will get some amount of uh, money return, right? Return and uh, right. So, so in this situation, you can get a twenty thousand profit, right? Twenty thousand profit, and uh, both of them are both of them are a promise to give you after one year hundred thousand. So this time, what is your option? Option one or two? Both HNB and your friend promised to give money hundred thousand in one year. This time, what's your option? One or two? Please type your answer on chat box. Both of them are promised to give you hundred thousand in one year. What is your answer? option two so why my question is why why you choose option two can you tell me the reason anyone can switch on the mic can tell the answer yeah rose Ro amarasiri has yeah amarasiri nayani also uh, put the correct answers low risk low risk isn't it low risk if you put your money into HNB, definitely a 90% guarantee that you can deposit that money in one year. But if you give the money in your friend to your friend, we cannot say it's 100% sure he will repay the money. So it's a risk uncertainty. We have discussed in detail about the concept of risk. It's answer uncertainty, not sure, right? So, uh, due, to the, due to the risk, due to the risk, uh, by comparing risk, option one and option two, uh, option two is comparatively low risk. So, therefore, you prefer to put your money uh, into the bank, right? Right. My third question, right? You can buy gold today. And if you have, so you have no use of money now, it's it's an additional money, so you can buy gold. At option three, right? Buy gold. Oh, right for jewelry, not for not for investment, your consumption purpose. So option three. Now you can purchase gold, right? Uh, and also, the, your friend HNB also give a sum return, and uh, you, you have option third option, right? You have three or one, two, three options. So this time, what will be option? Option one, you can give that money to your friend, and he will pay back that money after one year, right? HNB also uh, pay back your money. The same amount, no uh, interest. 
and uh, and you can buy the money today right you can buy gold today then uh, this time what will be your preference option 1 or 2 or 3 yeah most probably you will choose option 3 it's a consumption purpose right so right so when we look at the scenario there are three things you, you you should consider right there are three things you should consider right again my question right um once you give that money to your friend he will pay back this money in one year it's about 130000 or yeah 130000 and uh, people's bank hnb uh, will give you 120000 and uh, you can buy gold today so this time what will be your choose choice So option one or two or three this time. This time we have to think. Now Fatima and Spa says option two. She will invest this money in HNB, right? But your friend will give you hundred thirty. HNB will give you hundred twenty. So why you choose option two? why did you choose option 2 according to the nisfas view yeah option 2 there is no risk but uh, yeah i will explain what is no risk and uh, what is risk free rate right in later um yeah no risk we, we cannot say no risk as a finance term we have to say as a low risk there is no investment in the world with zero risk right the lowest low risk we can see right so for my last question option 1 2 3 there are three options to decide so which one is the best option we have to consider about three things right risk right risk number 2 risk and uh, preference for consumption that's gold investment opportunities right so again i i ask one question um today you have 100000 rupees we can consume um, some items some certain items for your consumption and you give that money into the hnb right you deposit that money in the hnb and uh, you withdraw that money after one year and you will get same amount 100000 with no interest do you can you buy the same items same items as today you have purchased Right, assume that in simple term, we have hundred thousand today. Option one, you can spend that money. You can uh, take that money into the uh, Kaigil Sports City, and there are some items, basket of items. Right. Option two, right. Option two, you got, uh, you put the money into the HNB, and there is no interest. and therefore you will get the same amount of money after one year 100000 and go to the food city so can you buy the same basket of items today and after one year for the same 100000 rupees can you buy yeah isuru says definitely no definitely no pavitra also says no it's a correct answer right you can't buy the same amount of items as you purchase today in the in forthcoming next year in future because due to some factors inflation and uh, interest rate exchange rate 
due to certain things the value of money is reduces right so the, the time the time will impact the actual value instinct value of the worth of money right so this is the simple way to explain uh, uh, time value of money right the worth so in rupee value same amount today 100000 and after one year same amount but the actual worth of that money is not equal right it's not equal Right, so the time difference for money, time difference for money is an individual's preference for possessions of a given amount of money now, rather than the same amount at the some future time. Right, we compare the value of the money today, the same amount of money after one year or after five years. Three reasons may be attributed to the individual's time preference for money. There are three things. Risk. You have, you have. So when I ask patients whether you will give money to your friend or HNB, deposit the money to HNB, most of the time, most of your answer, the option is better, the best option is to put the money in the HNB because of the risk. You will get the same amount, but when we compare the risk, Putting money on HNB relatively low risk. Therefore, you choose HNB. Preference for consumption, right? So another example I have asked, one question I have asked. So HNB and your friend will give same amount of money. And the third option I have asked, you have an option to buy gold or you can uh, consume that money, right? So preference for consumption. If you have that amount of money today, you can consume more than the value of uh, package in the future consumption and investment opportunities. So if you have money, uh, rather you can put your money into the into your drawer or you can put the money in business or you can put that money on interest bearing financial instruments. So most of the time people are not willing to put their money into the uh, drawer. They will, they will use that money for make, for the purpose of making profit, that is investment opportunities. So for the three purpose, three for the three reasons may be attributed to individuals' preference for money. One is risk, second, second one is preference for consumption, and third one is uh, investment opportunities. Right, now let us look at uh, what is uh, required rate of return. Required rate of return. In simple terms, we say, uh, right, again, I will use uh, Excel sheet, right? Right. Uh, that you have one million. Right, you have one million. Today you have. Today you have one million. And uh, commercial bank, so HNB. HNB uh, provides you after one year. 120,000, right, 120,000. And you have an investment opportunity. And if you put that money into the business, new investment venture, you will get 110,000. I will put option one here, option two here, right? So please uh, tell your answer. Are you prefer option one or two? 
So you deposit the money, we can get 120,000 HNB. And if you put the money in investment, you will get 110,000. Right, good. As a rational financial manager, rational person, you will choose option one, option one. Right? Then, uh, right? Mm, then uh, it gives 120. So what will your option? What will your option? Now both of them are giving uh, uh, same amount of money. Yeah, again option one. Option, again, option one. Because putting money in HNB is slow risk than investment. Assume that uh, investment opportunity also the same risk, right? You assume that both of them are same risk. Assume, right? Equal risk. Then this time, maybe in investment or HNB, maybe both, of, both decisions are rational, right? If you assume both of uh, same risk, right? Um, and, uh, right. And it gives, uh, right? Now, what's the rate required rate of return here? Um, now we I delete this one. So I'm just right. So you get 140. This time, what will be you the option you answer? Option one or two. Now investment gives you additional twenty thousand profit. So now tell the answer. Option one or two. Option one or two. Again one. Again, who says? Shanali Albert says again one. No. And uh, option two. Yeah. Option two. Option two is the rational answer. But at the same time, we have to consider the mindset of investor. Right? So if the investor is willing to take more risk and he will choose investment too and, uh, he, and he will enjoy high return. If the person is attitude is uh, he is not willing to take much risk and he will choose option one. He put money on HNB and he will get a low return than the investment, right? It's based on risk preference. So that is a new another chapter, right? So what is the rate of return here? Rate of return. Your investment is hundred thousand, and you are in how much? The interest is twenty thousand. So what is the rate of investment? Rate of investment here. So I can calculate. His profit is twenty thousand by investment is hundred thousand. So rate of return is twenty from HNB, right? And uh, what's the rate of return on uh, investment? Please type the answer. Forty exactly forty percent. Good, exactly 40%, right? So required rate of return. Required rate of return on HNB is 20, and required rate of return, so rate of return is 40, right? Required return of 40. Right, in terms of, uh, in percentage, HNB gives you 20% return, and investment give you 18% uh, of return. 18% of return, for example. So now your option is what? Option one. So you have a certain amount of money, right? You have a certain amount of money. Money. We have money today. Money. We have money. If you put the money on HNB, you will get 20% uh, 
return and uh, in if you put the money on investment you will get 18% return so this time what will your option option 1 or 2 exactly exactly option 1 and if uh, if investment gives you 28% your investment option your option one or two this time option two right so you now you will say right without seeing rupee value without seeing the this rupee value you say you compare no you compare this return with hnb return right you compare right you have uh, a certain amount of money it may be 100 rupees or 1000 rupees or 1 million or billion doesn't matter right if you put the money into the bank it can be it will it will give you 20 percent of interest right then you can calculate the return you will receive from the bank and uh, and also you can apply it there's an investment venture opportunity it will give you 28 percent right so this time most of the people uh, choose option two this option so you have made some criteria no you have used a type of criteria what is that criteria the criteria is what when i ask 18 percent right when i ask 18 percent uh, all the people say is option one when i put 28 percent of people are uh, says option two so why what what is your measurement behind that the simple answer is simple return no it's not a high return uh, yeah the answer is high return okay but the exact uh, the reason is you compare the return from a risk-free return risk-free investment this is the risk-free investment right for example no risk relatively no risk right if you put the money without any risk you will get 20 but you are taking risk and get 18 percent so worst option right you compare this and then the second time you have a, again you have compared compared with the risk free rate 20 percent and investment 28 return is 28 percent then there's a, a ruler there's a criteria right so when you make investment decision, either we put the money into the bank or into the investment, you you have you have compared that return on on the so it's mean uh, this is the minimum minimum return you are expecting from any investment, right? This is the amount, this is the rate you are expecting as a return minimum at least i have to gain 20 percent right if it is uh, if the return is below 20 percent you are not accept no no it's a it's a cost one cost for me it's an opportunity cost if i put the money i can get 20 percent interest at the same time if i put the money into the your business i will get only 18 percent you definitely you say no i can't then uh, your your friend says i will give you a uh, 28% my business says a uh, 28% so give the money then you will compare a bank is bank gives 20% but uh, you pay and at the same time you you, you promise to give 28% assume that uh, same at uh, the same risk then you will go for option 28 so this is 20% is the minimum rate of return minimum rate of return to make an investment right this is called required rate of return right required rate of return right it has uh, yeah the time preference for money is generally expressed by an interest rate this rate will be positive even in the absence of any risk Therefore, called risk-free rate. Say, in our example, uh, what, yeah. Assume that HNB is a uh, risk-free rate, right? Risk-free rate. HNB is giving. HNB has no risk. 
and you put the money and also you are getting expecting interest you are expecting interest right if the bank give the same amount of money as you as equal to your investment you better to purchase now if bank gives you additional amount in the in our earlier example uh, you have two option one option you can buy something today or we can put the money into the bank and you will withdraw the money the same amount no interest same amount after one year this time you will choose option one because the same amount of money you will receive in what today and the next year so a better option is uh, rather than putting money on hnb just you can purchase and enjoy your life right so this rate will be positive right so assume that hnb is a risk free rate is risk free investment and also you are expecting some return rate so it so this rate will positive right 20% no 80% 8% so you are putting money if you have additional money in your hand you put the money on people's bank fixed fixed deposit or hnb fixed deposit right and you are expecting some uh, certain amount of return right but no risk definitely you can get the money so that is the uh, rate called risk free rate it may be right so this this rate will be the positive even the absence of any risk so if you put the money in the people's bank you know, on fixed deposit no risk but you are expecting a certain amount of return so that rate of return is called as uh, return right uh yeah uh, then, uh right so that minimum rate so even though absence of risk there is no risk but you are expecting some rate of return so that's called a risk free rate right i think you have understood the concept called risk free return right at the same time, an investor requires a compensation for assuming risk, which is called risk premium. So, in this example, right? In this example, uh, now you are seeing slide, so slide or Excel sheet. Isuru, now you are seeing. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, right? Okay, so difficult. Right? Uh, right? So when we uh, so, right, if you put the money on H and B. You will get twenty percent, but no risk. Even though no risk, you are expecting some rate, some return. That is called uh, no risk, right? So it's, this rate is called risk-free rate. Risk-free rate and uh, risk-free rate and uh, so. Rather than putting H and B, rather than putting H and B, and you can you put the money on investments, right? A business opportunity, right? Then you are expecting twenty eight percent, right? You are it has some risk, right? So H and B is no risk, investment is high risk, right? Uh, relatively high risk. Then due to the risk, you are expecting higher return. So this higher return, twenty eight percent, right? So, so they are promised to give 28 percent higher than the risk free rate then you uh, say yes i will invest in investment investment opportunity so this 28 percent consists of two things first one you compare this value with minimum rate minimum rate of return sometimes it may be uh, it may be the risk free rate right plus you are assuming some risk you are assuming risk so therefore you are getting 8% additional additional return 
right? So total return is 28. Total return is 28 from this investment. This 28% include both. Uh, both each one. Uh, the spree rate and the premium, right? The spree rate, the premium, right? So this rate called the premium. So the time difference for money is generally expressed by an interest rate. This rate will be ex, uh, will be positive even in the absence of any risk. It may be therefore called risk-free rate. And a, an investor requires compensation for assuming risk, which is called risk premium. Therefore, the investor's required rate of return is risk premium, risk premium plus a risk. Risk premium. The investors require a return is risk premium, risk free rate plus risk premium, right? Okay, we'll discuss with using the example. Would an investor want uh, rupees 100 today or after one year? What's your answer? Would an investor want 100 today? Or after one year, what's your answer? Today or after one year? So I promise I will give you I I I give you two options. So I can give you hundred rupees today. Option two is uh, I will give you the same hundred rupees after one year. So what will your answer? Today, yeah, good. Today, all people are saying honestly, right? Good. Uh, Cash flows occurring in a different time period are not comparable, right? Cash flows occurring in different periods, say uh, uh, one year, two year, three year, right? It's necessary to adjust cash flows for their differences in uh, timing and risk, right? Timing and risk. So, the required of required rate of return consists of two things. The first one is a risk free rate that is for a compensation for waiting, right? The risk free rate is commonly used for compensation for assuming waiting. You are tolerate, right? You're waiting. So your waiting rate is risk free rate, and you are assuming risk. That is risk premium, right? Example: if pre if a preference rate is ten percent, now all the banks are paying 10% for uh, in 10 for investments, deposits, right? Right. An investor can invest if uh, 100 rupees, if 100 rupees, if he is offered 110 after one year. Right, an investor can invest. Right, uh, banks give ten percent interest. Right, bank gives ten percent interest. If you put money hundred rupees, after one year, how much you will receive? Hundred and ten rupees. Right, hundred rupees principal, ten percent interest. So total amount you will get hundred and ten rupees. Today, hundred and ten is the future value of the. Of rupees hundred today at ten percent in the street, right? So you have to very clearly understand what is future value, what is present value, right? So today, today the value of money is hundred. You have a note, right? You have hundred rupees note in your hand, right? So what is the present value of the money? Is hundred. What is the future value of that money? If you invest in 10% of interest into the bank, that is 110 rupees. So this is the future value. This is the future value. Right? Again, right? Very clearly understand my question. Right? You will receive 110 rupees in the bank after one year. From the bank, you will receive 110 rupees after one year from the bank. This 110 rupees is future value or present value. You will receive after one year. 
hundred ten rupees in the bank from the bank. So this hundred ten rupees is future value or present value? Future. That's a future value. You will receive the money in future. Therefore, that's a future value. Right. Again, my question is, what is the present value of that money? You will receive hundred ten rupees after one year. That's a future value. So, what is the present value of that money? Hundred exactly. Hundred, right? Hundred, right? Okay. If uh, right, assume that you will receive hundred rupees. You will receive hundred rupees after one year. What's the present value of that money? You will receive hundred rupees after one year. What is the present value of that money? Is more than hundred or less than hundred? People are says ninety. Right. It's not ninety. Ten uh, percent less. Right. We will discuss it later. Less than hundred, but we cannot say it's ninety. Right. There are some calculations we have to do. Right. So that is called present value calculation and future value calculations. Right. Right. The rupees hundred and ten is the future value of rupees hundred today at ten percent interest. Right. Also, rupees hundred today is the present value of hundred and ten after one year of ten percent interest. Right. If the investor gets less than hundred and ten, he will not invest. Anything above hundred and ten is favorable, right? So, so come back to this question: Would an investor want to want to be hundred today or after one year? All people says, "I want this money today. I want this money today." Option two, option two. It's a good investment, sir. Good investment. I hope all of you have got clear idea about what's the present. What, what do you mean by present value and what do you mean by future value? Right. Right. Time value adjustment. Time value adjustment. Two most common methods of adjusting cash flows for time value of money, right? So compounding and discounting, right? Compounding and discounting. Compounding means here uh, you put hundred rupees in the bank. You put hundred rupees in the bank. After one year, you will get uh, hundred ten rupees because of uh, ten percent interest. So what you have done? I will do in Excel sheet, right? What is compounding? What is discounting? We have hundred rupees, right? Interest is uh, interest is ten percent after one year. How much I will give? I will receive how much? How much? Ten. Hundred and ten. Hundred and ten. Year two. Year two. How much? Pavitra, how much? Hundred and twenty. Hundred twenty-one. Yes. How do you got it? I will explain. Third year. Hundred and thirty-two. Thirty-three point one. Right. Right. Good. All of us uh, are good in mathematics. Right. So this is compounding, right? It's a hundred. So the formula is. Uh, uh, we can write formula. 
वन प्लस ओके वन प्लस आर राइट वन प्लस आर वन इज वन नॉर्मल वन आर इज रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज वन टेन परसेंट राइट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एंड नंबर ऑफ इयर्स नंबर ऑफ इयर्स या इन फोर या वन या वन प्लस रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज़ जीरो पॉइंट वन पॉइंट जीरो वन दिस इज़ टेन परसेंट राइट जीरो पॉइंट वन परसेंट मीन जीरो पॉइंट वन मीन टेन परसेंट सो हाउ मेनी इयर्स या वन ईयर या वन राइट या One zero point one, but time number of years two. One plus R year three. Right. Now we'll see how much. So this is the principal amount into. I press the amount into future value. Future value. Right, it's a future value. P V I M. P V I M. P I M. Future value introspective. Right, future value. Future value. Future value introspective. Future value. Future value. Yeah. And here, that's why hundred and one hundred. It's not a hundred zero point zero one. It's a zero point one, right? Sorry. Right. Hundred and year one, you will receive hundred ten rupees for the hundred rupees investment. And year two, you will receive the principal amount into future value of interest factor. This value. Hundred twenty one, and uh, likewise, hundred rupees into hundred thirty one point hundred thirty three point one, right? Right. So these are the uh, future values. So the future value of hundred rupees after three years is what? Hundred and thirty-three point one. The future value of hundred rupees in three year is hundred and three point one. The future value of future value of hundred rupees after two years is hundred and twenty-one. Right? Then uh, I can ask the same question in different way. So, what is the present value of hundred and thirty-three point one rupees? In th you will receive hundred and thirty-three point one rupees. After three year, what's the present value of that money? Hundred is hundred. So we are what we are doing? It's compounding. It's called compounding. What's that? Compounding. It's called compounding, right? Interest to interest, interest to interest, right? Interest, interest on interest, interest on interest, like that. Compounding, right? So from this, from future value, from present value, from present value, we have found. Yeah, from present value, we move to future value using compounding, right? From present value to future value is called compounding. And uh, from future value to from future value to present value is discounting. Discounting, right? I will ask the question, right? You will receive hundred and ten rupees after one year. You will receive hundred and one 
110 rupees after one year what is the present value of that money 100 100 good so how we can calculate this using uh, here we have used future value in this vector now we will use present value in this vector present value in this vector how we do is and the formula is this formula uh, one plus r to the power n number of years right so this is future value this is future value right then what we have to do is this is the formula same as future value so what we have to do is one over one over future value one over future value right one over future value if we know that uh, this is the future value in this vector to convert to find the present value in this vector what we have to do is one over future f e i a future value in this vector right likewise one over future value right now now we will see present value right we will so this is the present this is future value you know this is future value this is future value this is future value this is the present value right this is 100 rupees is the present value now we don't know what is the present value right someone someone come and say i will give you 133.1 rupees in three years right then what's the present value today so what we have to do is equal this value into pi pvif say how much 100 so what is the, the present value of this value you will receive 121 rupees in year two so what is the present value of that one uh, this value into hundred again one and ten rupees into right. So this factor is called discounting, right? This discount. So to convert from present value to future value, that is compounding convert future value to present value is called discounting right any questions any questions so compounding the process of calculating future value of cash flows discounting the process of calculating uh, present values of cash flows any questions you can ask Any questions?